Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name this morning, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We look to you, God. Good morning, Sister Yvette. I pray your morning is well. Glory to God. Thank you for your wisdom this morning. Thank you for your wisdom this morning, God. Glory to your name, God. Bless your name this morning, God. We thank you that your presence is real, God. We thank you, God. We love you, God. You are our strength, God. We will love you. Lord, you are our shield. Bless the Lord this morning, Sister Apple. Glory to God. Forever, all my days, I will love you. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you. Lord my God Forever all my days I will love you Hallelujah Hallelujah Anybody got a praise of worship in their heart this morning I love God He's worthy to be praised From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same He's worthy Our God reigns Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. My God reigns. Forever all my days. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He reigns, y'all. My God reigns. My God reigns. You got to make it personal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God reigns. Hallelujah. My God reigns. He reigns, he rules, he's an authority forever. Hallelujah over our businesses, hallelujah. Over our relationships, over our health, oh God, you reign. Over our home, God, you reign. Over our finances, God, you reign. Hallelujah, God, over our lives, you reign. Hallelujah. Forever all my It's hallelujah forever forever all my days it's hallelujah glory to God Hey Money in the bank forever all my days it's hallelujah Hallelujah you reign in a relationship not in a relationship you reign Hallelujah God Glory to God Going it alone, doing it alone. With a full team, God, you reign. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you reign. You rule. You set high. Hallelujah. You look low. Hallelujah. You see the concerns of your people this morning. Forever, 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 forever. All my days. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, God. Thank you for another day, God. Thank you for the blessings of the Lord, this blessing that makes us rich this morning, that adds no sorrow to us this morning, the blessing of life, the blessing of a mind, the blessing of a voice that has sound that can praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing, God, of siblings, God, of Loved ones, God, of mothers, of fathers, of nieces, of nephews, thank you for the blessing, God. Thank you for the blessing of spouses, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the answer, God, that's coming, Lord. We say thank you this morning. We say hallelujah this morning. We say glory to your name this morning. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord who comes. Hallelujah. We say, thank you for Resurrection Week, God, as we come up on Good Friday. God, we thank you that every day is good because we can taste and see that the Lord, good God Almighty, hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Glory to the name of God. Glory to the name of God. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. Over every concern of your heart, over every worry of your mind, of every doubt and of every question, He reigns. He's hovering over it. Hallelujah. He's looking over it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He reigns. Hallelujah. We bless his name this morning. We praise his name this morning. Hallelujah. Oh God, forever, forever and ever and ever, his mercies are new every morning and they rule and they reign every morning. Forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. We bless his name this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. We say thank you, Lord, for healing us before the doctor says we're healed. We say thank you for a clear mind before we have it, God. We say thank you for the answer before it comes, oh God. We say thank you for the provision, oh God, before it comes, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, God, that doubt today is being taken away because understanding is about to come. Hallelujah, God, for why they're going through what they're going through. Bless your name, God, why they're in the place that they're in, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for the answer. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for the answer this morning. We thank you for the word this morning. It shall not return void. It shall go and accomplish what you send it to do. God, use me for your glory. God, hide me behind your cross. Hallelujah, God, let the blood fall. Let the blood continue to flow. Hallelujah, God, as your Holy Spirit falls upon me and upon those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to them, the church, oh God. Thank you, God, for those who awake to fourth watch, God, to the fourth watch prayer, 5 a.m., oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the last watch of the night. Hallelujah, God. We are praying in your purpose over our lives today. Hallelujah, over our family, God, over our loved ones, over our spouses, over our children, God. Hallelujah, over our purpose, oh God. God, we thank you. Over the plans that you have for us this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We bless the name of the Lord our God who is worthy to be praised. There is none like you in all the earth. Yes, we searched. We've looked here and we looked there and we looked high and we looked low and we looked in men and we looked in women. We looked in relationships. We looked in friendships. We looked in our jobs, oh God. We looked in the money, oh God. We looked in clothes, oh God. We looked in our outward pokertude, oh God. We looked, God, in our image, oh God. We looked everywhere, oh God. But we found no one ha, to be like you. No one to be like you because you are worthy to be praised.
You are magnificent and you are holy. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, for the plan and the purposes of the lives of your people, oh God. Father God, let someone prepare their hearts to hear. Let them prepare their ears to receive, oh God. We place the blood anointing over our ears, oh God. Hallelujah, God, that only what you have for us to hear and receive comes through, God. Pinpointed word of God. Make my words, oh God, that of a ready writer, oh God. Spoken what you have for me to speak. God. Hallelujah that someone live is encouraged. Someone this morning is encouraged. Someone has hope, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Stir up your prophetic word. Stir up your prophetic teaching. Stir up your, stir up your prophetic gift this morning, oh God, with words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Prophetic utterances, oh God, that come from heaven. Thank you for the download, oh God. Hallelujah this morning. You are the answer. I love you, God. And we worship you, Lord. I thank you, God, for your people. Ah, thank you for your people. Glory to God. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for the siblings, God. Join heirs of God. Hallelujah. Heirs of Christ. Join heirs with Christ and heirs of God. Hallelujah, God. Let them know this morning, God, that every provision and every need can be met when they remember that they are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells therein. Uh, the cattle on a thousand hills. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to you, O oh God. And we are your children. And we are your inheritors. Oh God, let someone be reminded this morning that their needs are met. Hallelujah. Our needs are met. Our needs are met. The answer is coming. Hallelujah. The knock is coming. The phone call is coming. Hallelujah, God. Glory to God. Thank you for more than enough this morning. Thank you for more than enough this morning. Thank you for more than enough this morning. Thank you for the answer this morning. For you are the answer, oh God. You are the way, the truth, and the life. The light, oh God. And you are life. Hallelujah, God. You are the gate, God. And you are the shepherd, God, that maintains the gate. <laughs> you are the sheep, oh God. You are the sacrifice, oh God. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are the priest. You are the sacrifice. You are the gate. You are the way. You are the truth. You are light and you are life. Hallelujah, oh God. We thank you, God, that everything we need is in you. Glory to the Lamb of God this morning. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you this morning, God. God, blow our minds, Lord. Let someone come back and say, God did it. Hallelujah. Let someone come back and say, God stands. I stand amazed by what you do, oh God. Hallelujah. Let us not ever get so common with you, God, that we are not put in awe by you, oh God. Oh God, you are a terrible God. Hallelujah. You are perfect in all your ways, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for those who share this time of prayer and power and teaching, oh God. Those who will tag someone, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Let us share, God, your word, God. Hallelujah, God. Let us share this prayer, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, our lamb. Jesus, our sacrifice. Jesus, our answer. Jesus, our blessing. Jesus, our provision. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our master. Hallelujah. Jesus, the king. Jesus, the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, the word, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Our answer is in you, oh God. Bless your name this morning, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Encourage someone, Lord. Let them be reminded they must need it to go through what they went through. What they're in the middle of, they must need go through. I thank you for healing in my body, Lord. 
I thank you, God, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, God, against your people, against your saints, God. Any tongue that rises against them, God, you shall condemn it. Any sickness, any disease, any infirmity, God, we call it out and we appropriate the blood over it in the name of Jesus, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. You are our healer. You are our redeemer. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, cursed is he who hung on the cross, O God. But we thank you, God, that you took every sin. You took took every sickness, you took every disease to that cross and it hung, it's hung up there, God, forever, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, we will not take it down with our words. We will not take it down with our disobedience. We will not take it down by claiming my sickness, my disease, my blood pressure, my diabetes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, we will not take it down. We will not take it back. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the understanding this morning that comes by your word. And we bless your name. We must need go through. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for your word in John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles, grab them. It's going to be a good word this morning. Somebody's going to leave in courage. Tag your sisters, tag your brothers, tag the body, tag the unbeliever. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, God. The answer is coming because he is the answer. He is the way. He is truth and he is life and light. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John chapter 4. And the word of the Lord says, Hmm. No, let's go back to back chapter 3. Let's see. I want to go back to chapter 3. We're going to go to the end of chapter 3. And then we'll jump over to chapter 4. Amen? Amen. And the word of the Lord says, Jesus says, I must increase. He said, I, he must increase, but I must decrease. And so we, if when we remember in the book, the chapter three, and I'm going to read this from two different versions. We love God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what to say about him this morning. I'm already somewhere. Now, let me tell y'all, my voice is a little hoarse. Y'all going to say I'm crazy, but I literally been up all, literally all night, li literally all night. I've been up all night. Okay. All night. Wash my face, brush my teeth, freshened up. So I could be on this call. So I could come into the presence of the Lord. Revive. But when I get off here, I'm going to go to sleep. But I've been up all night. And so the word of the Lord says that um, Jesus is having this conversation. This is chapter 3 is when Jesus is teaching Nicodemus. And we come to the end of chapter 3. John chapter 3. And... Um, um, John, in the latter part of chapter 3, John, John the Baptist, is talking about Jesus. He's testifying about Jesus. And this is what he says. The person who comes from above is superior. Listen, is superior to everyone. We know that's Jesus. And he says, I am a person from the earth. We are from the earth, knowing nothing but what is on the earth? We don't we don't know spiritual things unless God reveals them. He says, and so because of that, that's all we can talk about. He said, that's all we can talk about is what we know. And most of what we know is what we are experiencing in the earth. He says, but the person who comes from the heavens is superior to all things and everything. He says, so. John the Baptist says, I have accepted. Yes, John chapter 3, verse 30. He says, I've accepted this. I've accepted that God is truthful. That everything God says is truthful because he is superior to everything and everyone in this earth. Because he is omni, omnipotent, omnipresent. He is omni. He's all wise. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He says, I accept this. He said, after all, wasn't it God who gave us the spirit without limit? You got to follow me. You must 
You got to go through. You got to go through. God gave you, and this is why you can go through, because God gave you the spirit, his Holy Spirit, without limit. He says, so, since he's the one who did that, he didn't, with, with, he didn't withhold not an inch, not a minute piece of his spirit from you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that every spiritual blessing comes from above. God withholds nothing from you because you're his child. Because you, the Bible even says, because you're his friend. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. We know we don't always tell, we don't always tell our kids everything, but you know who we do tell? Our friend, our confidant, the person that's our roadie that we cool with. We, we tell them. So the Bible says, whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. Verse 36, chapter 4, verse 36, John. He said, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. He said, but instead, he will see God's constant anger. This is why you must go through. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere because we're about to jump to chapter 4. You must go through so that you have a testimony to tell the unbeliever that God saves and that their salvation is unto eternity. They don't have to be, even in this earth, struggling the way that they struggle. They really don't. But it is up to us who must go through. You must go through. He told the children of Israel, cross to the other side, go to the other side. He had an expectation for them to go through. He told Peter and all of those in the storm, we're going to go to the other side because he had an expectation for you, for them, for us to go through. You, you must need go through. Let's jump on over to John chapter 4. Amen. We going somewhere. So remember, you can go through because God gave you the spirit of the living God without limits. So you can go. Through. Thank you. When this starts doing that looping thing, just plead the blood. It got to go every time. I'm telling you, the blood works. So we're in chapter four. And chapter 4 is where Jesus, John chapter 4, is where Jesus encounters the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. So this is what Jesus said. Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard what he was saying and, was make, and, and, was, and what he was making and baptizing, that he was making and baptizing disciples. He said, actually, Jesus was not really baptizing his people. It was his disciples who were baptizing people because he left the countryside and went back to Galilee. So even though the Pharisees see, this is why you got to be people talking smack. They don't even know what you're doing. It ain't even you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit doing it through you. They want to look at you and be like, you always doing something. No, it ain't me, boo. You got an issue with me. You need to go talk to God. You got an issue with all that I'm doing. You have an issue with my anointing. You need to go talk to God because it really ain't me doing it. It's God doing it. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. You know that all that you do, you probably couldn't do it on your own. I'm a witness. All that I do, I couldn't do it on my own. And some people, bless the name of the Lord, they come in your name. I'm calling on the behalf of pastor such and such. I'm calling on behalf of apostle, a prophetess, doctor, or sister. I'm calling on the behalf of them. They're doing the work. But people hating on you. See, this is why we got to be clear about the scripture that says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And God will give you the power to condemn it. God ain't condemning that word. He's giving you the power to condemn it with your word, with your witness, <laughs> by your good works. And they will eventually have to shut their mouths. And if they don't, God will deal with them. So Jesus tells us in chapter four, as we enter, people are being baptized and the Pharisees are talking smack. All them Pharisees in your life, all them religious people who want to tell you women shouldn't be doing that. You single, you shouldn't be doing that. Women can't preach. 
Women can't be pastors. I really could care less. I ain't called to be a pastor. I know my office, as we call it, it ain't to pastor. It's not to pastor a church. I'll say it that way. Come alongside my husband? Absolutely when he comes. However... That ain't none of nobody's business. It's God doing it. And if God has a problem with it, he's going to show them. And if he doesn't, he'll shut it down. All you do is pray. Man, you shouldn't be doing that. Girl, I don't know why you bringing your tithes. I don't know why you always at church. I don't know why. You don't know why because you ain't in relationship. You have not received the spirit without limit. And that's why you don't know. That's why you don't know. That's why you run in your mouth, Pharisee, about what a kingdom believer is doing because you don't get it. Hey, Brother Chris. Hey, Brother David. Hey, Brother Michael. Hey, hey, Sister Krishan. Bless the Lord this morning. You run in your mouth because you don't know. You don't know why that person is doing what they're doing and living the way that they're living and waiting on God to materialize and to manifest. See, my topic today was going to be hurry up and wait. But as I was preparing for that, God said, no, my people need to know that they must need go through what they're going through. And I have given them my spirit without limit, according to John chapter three, so they can go through. And them going through is what will give the testimony for those who do not believe and do not have their name written in the Lamb's book of life so that they can too have eternal life and will no longer be tormented with the anger of God. That's the word. So Jesus is there at the well. The Samaritan woman comes up. <clears throat> so this is what Jesus says to his people. He says in, in the King James or the new and the new King James, it says, I must need go through Samaria. I must need go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria near the plot of a ground called Jacob that had been given to his son, Joseph. He said Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well and it was about noon. We've heard this story preached many times. The woman should have never been at the well at noon, all of that. But Jesus knew that woman was going to be at the well. This is what this is what God wants you to get out of this text. I'm not preaching the woman at the well. I'm preaching that you must need go through. This is what you need to hear today. Jesus is waiting for you right where you are supposed to pass by. What has God told you to do in your going through? What has he told you to do in your valley? What has he told you to do as you're coming up out of your valley? What has he told you to do as you're going in your valley? I once heard uh, my previous pastor say, if you're not going, if you're not in it, you're coming out of it or you're getting ready to go into it. You're in, getting ready to go into it. You're in it or you're coming out of it because we all must need go through. It is the going through that builds our faith. It is the going through that adds to our faith. It is the going through that strengthens us for the journey, for the next leg, because we can look back and say, I made it through that. I can make it through this. And God needs you to understand that today. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, um, okay, I'm going to do that, Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. God wants you to understand that your through is necessary. Your through is necessary. The, 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 the definition of through means to move from one side to the other. <laughs> to move out of a place into another place. You must need go through. Okay? Going through is what helps you to connect the dots, beloved. Ah, that's why I went through that. That's what that's about. It helps you to start to connect the thought, the 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 thoughts in your life, the patterns of your life. Good morning, good morning, Sister Hall. Good morning, Sister Cooper. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. And God wants you to understand. You gotta go through that. I know it don't make sense, but this is where all things will work together for good because you love Him and you are called according to His purpose. When you recognize, 
I must need go through this. When you don't see a way out, when you don't understand, you're praying, you're fasting. And I'm telling you, keep praying and fasting in your valley. Pray and fast in your on your mountain too. Because you're going to either go in, you're in it, or you're going to come out. And it ain't nothing like already having a prayed up, fasted life. Because when you go through, when you're in the middle of through, you don't always feel like praying. But because you have been prayed up and you're fasted up and you have the word in you, whether you want to or not, something going to come up out of you with a praise or a hallelujah or a thank you anyhow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's going to come up out of you. Lord, I thank you. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, God. Hallelujah. You must need go through. God. God, your breakthrough is in the through. Did you hear me? Did you hear what the Lord said? Your breakthrough is in the through. But you got to go through the through. Jesus said, Jesus said, had they known, they would not have lifted me up. Jesus had to go to the cross. He had to take the stripes. He had to be pierced. He had to be nailed. Good God Almighty. And he's so awesome, he got on the cross for him. He put himself on there. Good God Almighty. You must need go through. And you must do your best not to complain in your through. I know it's a long time. I know it's been a long time. I know you're ready for the breakthrough. I know you're ready to come out. But God said, do not give up. Your well-doing. God is going to remember Somebody needs to hear this. God is going to remember your labor of love. Your labor of love before you went into your valley. Your labor of love. He's going to remember it. God needs for you to remember this morning. He needs for you to be encouraged this morning. Good morning, Portia. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Tracy. God needs for you to be encouraged this morning. You must need go through. It is the strengthening. It is the process. None of us likes the process. Nobody wants the process. But through by definition. It, it literally means um, in that in that going through process, you're being inspected. You're being inspected in the through. You're being expect, inspected and approved in the through for your next level. Hallelujah. God needs you to understand that this morning. It is in your through that you are being approved. You're being stamped approved. You're being stamped ready. You're being stamped time for her next level. Time for his next level. Good God Almighty. You had to go through that loss. You had to lose that job. Hallelujah. So you would fight. So you would know how to fight. So you would know how to stand. You had to go through that bad relationship. So you know what a bad one looks like. And you're saying, oh, no, 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 no. I won't put up with that again. I have an expectation. I have some qualifications. Because I've been expected, inspected. You need to be inspected. Do you hear what I'm saying? You had to go through that. Was it God's will for you to go through that addiction? I won't say that because the Bible says it is God's will that you believe. We picked that up. We picked that up. We did that. We started on that path. But you had to go through it. And now you've gone through it. You can be a testimony. You can be a witness. You can be a blessing to somebody else. Was it God's will for you to go through that divorce? Probably not. Did you marry someone God told you not to marry? Maybe. But what I do know is that God blesses marriage. And if both of you would have got on the same page and not been stubborn, somebody stubborn, somebody wanting it they way, somebody want to be selfish, whatever it was, not wanting to forgive, still angry, holding on to stuff. God said, no, no, no. If you would have got it together, I, I would have kept it together. But since you didn't, I allowed the divorce to happen. And you had to go through that. But now that you're on the other side of it, it's time to forgive. It's time to be healed. It's time to be used to be a blessing to help someone else. Through. Through is to continue. It's a continuance of something. God never meant for us to stay 
in our through places. Did you hear what I said? The Holy Spirit said, I never meant for you to stay in your through, in your through places. I never meant for the children of Israel to stay in the valley. I never meant for them to stay in the desert. I never meant for them to stay there. They were to go through. And I gave them a clear path. The truth is, God has given us all a clear path to make it through our through. But we lingering. You know, there are flowers that are actually in the desert. Did you know that? There are beautiful flowers in the desert. And God might mess around and put you a palm tree in the desert like he did the children of Israel. And you want to linger in the desert. No, no. You having, hallucin you having hallucinations. You think you see a river. No, 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 it's not. It's a hallucination. You need to come on up out. You've been in the desert too long. God has given you a way out. He's given you a way out with giving you an, an idea, a witty invention, a book, a business, a, a different job. He's given you a way out. He's given you a way out. You're in that marriage and God wants you to stay in that marriage. He's given you a way out. Of being frustrated in your marriage. No it ain't divorce. It's humbling yourself. It's being. It's creating an environment. For your spouse to forgive you. It's, it's you stop touching the wound. By still doing the same stuff you've been doing. That keep pissing them off. And having them say I'm out. I'm done. It's eat some humble pie. How about that? That's a good pie. Forgive. That's good too. Accept responsibility for what you've done. God's given you a way of escape for you to be happy in your marriage, for you to be happy on your job while you're looking for another job, maybe. He gives us a way out. He gives us a way of escape. But we got to manage our through. We got to manage our through places. It's never meant for you to stay there. It's, it's continuing. The, the, the word through literally means to continue on to completion. That's good news this morning. Jesus said, I must need go through in John chapter 4. He had to continue through unto completion. He had to be inspected. When he went and fasted for 40 days and the devil came out and tempted him. Jesus was going through. He was going through and he was being tested and he was being tempted. But God said, no temptation has seized us except that which is common to man. But when you have been tempted, when you are tempted, I will give you a way through. I will give you a way of escape. That's what he promised. You're not paying attention to your ways of escape. Sometimes the way of escape is simply a two-letter word. No, I will not come over at one o'clock in the morning. No, I'm a married man and I cannot take you home. Get one of them sisters to take you home. Sister such and such, can you take her home? You at work, they always want you to take her home. No, no, I'm not taking you home. Don't fall for the okie doke, bros. Help, I'm here to help. Don't fall for the okie doke. Oh, you look so nice today. Oh, that's such a nice tie. And your wife ain't complimented you in weeks, probably because she's mad about something that you need to go and be reconciled for. Or you haven't complimented her, and so she's feeling neglected. So some man rubbing up on her like the serpent in, in the Garden of Eden, telling her what she needs to hear to get her emotions satisfied and you getting your ego satisfied. Yeah, God will give you a way of escape. Powerful word. Two letters. No. And you ain't even got to say thank you. Just know. You must need go through these testings and these trials. You had to go through that. You had to go through that sickness because now you know God to be a healer. You went through that divorce and now you had to go through the healing. You had to go through the forgiveness process because now you understand. You understand what it means to be emotionally healed. And at peace with God and at peace with other people, you had to go through. You had to go through losing that job because now you know God is a provider. You had to go I, I, being, being sideswiped 
by that thing, by that relationship that ended out of nowhere, or that man or that woman showed themselves to be something that for weeks and months and years, you're like, I didn't know that was there, but you had to go through it because now your discernment is keener. Everything that you go through, God has a purpose for it. Everything that you go through, God has a purpose for it. I want to read this scripture into your hearing because it absolutely blessed me. It absolutely blessed me. But thank you, devil. You're going to stop messing with people on this phone, on this call. There was a, There's a scripture in the Old Testament. And it's read, it goes something like this. It says in about, I think it's in Genesis. Hold on. It says in Samuel, Samuel chapter 2, verse 14. Chapter 14, this is what the word of the Lord says. He says, he says, we must die. The Bible says, we must die and our water, when our, when our heart is depleted of blood, water comes forth. Remember the piercing of Jesus? He said, we must die as, and at our, and are as water on the ground, which cannot be gathered up. Neither does God ha is any respecter of person, nor does he devise any special means for anybody else. Listen, this is the word that I believe God wants you to understand. That whatever we're going through in life, we, whatever we spill out, good God Almighty, whatever we spill out in, in shame, in guilt, God said, leave it right there. Whatever you spill out in your mistakes, whatever you spill out in your journey, whatever you spill out and you told the wrong person your story. Good morning, Sister Kim. Kimberly, whatever you spill out, whatever you, has come out of you, God said, leave it there on the ground. Don't try to gather it up like it's water because you must die. The Bible says, that if we die, we must need die. He says, if a seed falls to the ground and dies, he says that it it will it will it must die underneath the ground and it must die there so that it can produce and it can produce much more than what it went into the ground as. When it comes up, you put a seed in the ground, you gonna get a, you put an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree. You get a bushel of apples. You put that seed in the ground, you're going to get much more. But he says to them, please let us say, so this is, this is, um, this is the, the prophet and the people are talking to him and they're asking him all of these 50 million questions, <laughs> um, and he says to them, he says, listen, in verse 14, he says, why have you devised something like this against God? They, they had all these 50 million questions. So this is why he drops this wisdom on them. He said, you beat yourself up. You condemn yourself because you haven't brought back what you banished. He said, you were going, you were all going to die. He said you were going to die and you were going to be spilled out and poured out on the ground like water that can't be gathered up. But God forgave you. And he plans for you to never be banished again. Stop letting people tell you, you got to be, um, remember your past. You went through it so you ain't got to go back through it. Whatever you're going through now should not be a repeat of what you already went through. Hear me. Quit what, going along the Marbury Bush ministry. Whatever you have gone through already, it is not God's will for you to go through it again unless you did not learn your lesson. Because you forgot that he has given you all of his spirit to make it through whatever you're going through. So that you can be a testimony. So that the perfect love and will of God can be made manifest through you. So that you can have all that you need in this season of your life. But you keep missing it. You keep missing the opportunities to grow and to learn. To put that down so that you can pick this up. 
Good God Almighty, your hands are full and they're full with the issues of life and the issues of your past. And God said you must need go through. God needs for you to go through. God needs for you to go through. Isn't that something? God needs for you to go through what you're been what you've gone through so you can be a witness and a testimony of his grace and of his love and of his mercy. What has God wanted to teach you? What is he trying to teach you, beloved? What is he trying to teach you in the things that you keep repeating? I've been there. I've been there. And if I'm not careful, I'll go. I'll be there again. I've been there. God wants us to learn in our through. God wants us to learn so that we can be qualified. So that we can be approved. So that we can be processed through this thing. So that we can be a blessing to someone else. That's what it's all about. That's the kingdom. That's what it's about. Us being a blessing to someone else. Listen, I don't advocate you telling your kids all your mess from your childhood, right? I don't advocate that. Not all the details, right? But it ain't nothing wrong with telling your kids. I used to get high. And it ain't do nothing for me. And because I used to get high, I know what high looked like. Yeah. Because I started having sex as a teenage girl, I know what having sex as a teenage girl looked like. That's why I can spot it. Yeah. I, You know, the person who was abused in their relationship by a boyfriend or a spouse, you know what a woman looks like who's been abused. You went through that and you had to go through. That's why God didn't let you stay in there. You must need it to go through it, not stay in it. Get your way of escape, beloved. Tell somebody and the person who knows it, who has a discernment and you rolling up on her, you just need to let her know. I know what you're going through. Don't be scared. I know what you're going through. And you can tell me till the cows come home that you're not, but I know what it looked like. I know what that looked like. I know what depression looks like because I was depressed and I went through it. I know what suicide looks like because I was suicidal. I'm talking about Tuesday Tate right now. I know what suicide looks like to have yourself locked in a house for days. See, I was a punk. I'm going to talk about it. I was a punk. I was going to take my life. I was too scared to take my life, but I wanted somebody else to take my life. So I would leave all my doors unlocked. How crazy is that? And God is so gracious. He never let anybody come in and take my life because I didn't need to go through that. My family didn't need to go through that. The way my house was made, you will walk into my gate. And there was a door, and then that was a room, that was my sitting room, and there was a glass door. You would go around the corner, there was another glass door. You would go around, in my hallway, there was another glass door. So the first glass door was the, was the family room. The glass door that went like this was my living room, and the glass door on this side was my bedroom. I would leave them all unlocked. I would leave my gate unlocked. I would leave my doors unlocked, the front door, the back door, because I wanted to take my life. But God, I needed to go through that. I know what suicide looks like. And if God puts it on my heart, that's why I'm, be, I'm, su I'm like, don't play with suicide because I know what it looks like. Don't play with suicide to get people moved in their emotions so that they're scared, so that you're manipulating people. No, 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 don't do that. Because when it's real, we know what it looks like. And it has no mercy. God needed for you. He needs you right now. Whoever is under the sound of my voice and you're going through something, he needs you to go through it, not to stay in it so that you can be a blessing, so that you can be an encouragement, so that you can be a spoken word into somebody else's life. You may not know 500 scriptures, but you know what God did for you. And you can say, I know what he did. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. You got to go through, beloved. You must need go through. God want, he is, oh, just let it spill on the ground. Just put it all out there. Good God almighty. And don't try to gather it up. Because leave it in the valley. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Leaks and manner 
are not for when you come up out the valley. Leave that right there. Leeks and manna are not for when you are in the desert. It's not for when you're in the promised land. That's when you're in the valley. That's when you're in the desert. But God is so good. Some of y'all eat lobster. Ha! Some of y'all eat shrimp. Some of y'all shipping on champagne in your dry seasons and in your valley. Some of you taking trips to Hawaii and Jamaica and going on cruises. Because that's how our God is. He'll bless you in the midst of why you're going through. And even that becomes a testimony unto God. You must need go through, beloved. And I'm going to encourage you. Don't do it complaining. Don't do it worrying. Don't do it fearful. Don't do it doubting. Don't, don't, do not. How do you want me to say this, Jesus? Do not be Joseph in your valley and speak things when you're upset, when you're lonely, when you're in despair. And don't speak things when you're sad. And don't be too overly anxious when you're happy. Just settle yourself. Settle yourself because you're coming out. Settle yourself and prepare through prayer and fasting and the word. I keep telling y'all, all y'all need is the word, Jesus, and the blood. That's all you need. I don't care what you're going through. All you need is Jesus, the word, and the blood. And guess what? All of that is Jesus. That's all you need to make it through. That's all you need to come out of your situation. Put the word on it. Say, in the name of Jesus and the blood. And you good. And you will come up out of that. You may, some of you have been in your through longer than you were supposed to. That was your processing. All of us got, got, got something that we bought that has a little thing on the inside that says inspected by. God's been waiting to put that little sticker on your life and on your season. Approved. For this next season of your life. Approve for this next assignment. Approve for that next level. Approve for that marriage. Approve for that man. Approve for that woman. Approve for that increase. He's waiting. But you hanging out in the valley. You hanging out in your through place. There's a door that you need to walk up to. Knock on it. There's a door that there is a knocking. That you need to say, who is it? Jesus is standing knocking to bring you through. You need to come on through, beloved. No more excuses. Some of you haven't gone through because you're afraid. You're afraid of what new looks like. You're afraid of what the next level looks like. You're afraid of what, how is it going to look and how is it going to feel and who's going to be there with me and who's going to help me when I get there. How ain't none of your business. You just need to do what God has told you to do. What has God told you to do? To do? Your way out. Your way out is in your hands. Success, Fred Hammond says, is in your hand. God says, follow my plan. He, the song says, I've called you for this hour and placed in you my power. It's in your hands. Follow my plan. That's what God wants you to do. He needs you to follow his plan. And when we are obedient, because we love God, and we are called according to his purpose, that is when everything will work together for our good. God is calling you through. Jesus said, I must need go through. There is a place called there. And I think next week we're going to talk about that. There is a place called there that God is waiting on you. That every blessing that he has for you is waiting right there like a mistletoe. <laughs> the mistletoe of the Messiah. Good God Almighty. It's right there. And he is waiting on you to drop all of your blessings in that spot. But you got to go through so you can get there. And get all that God has for you. Jesus had to go through. He had to go through so that he could meet the woman at the well. He had to be there because he knew she was going to be coming at noon. And he had to speak life into her. He had to allow her to see him, Jesus, 
and that she would go home and tell everybody, I met a man. God needs for you to go through so that you can tell everybody, not only have I met a man, I've experienced a man. And he has given me all of his spirit so that I can be a testimony to him. And I can bring people in. I can win someone to Christ who no longer has to be in a place of anger with God. We bless God for the word this morning. You had to go through. The court case, you had to go through it. The bankruptcy, you had to go through it. The lawsuit, you had to go through it. It was a testing of your faith. It was a building of your faith. You had to go through it. You had to go through that loss. Because now, you appreciate your family more. Now, arguing about stupid stuff really don't even matter anymore. You're like, mm -mm, life is too short. I must, I had to go through that because now I know, now I know. Glory to God. I love you this morning. Hey, Sans Monica, I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Hey, Sister Pamela, and I pray that someone was encouraged this morning, that someone was activated, imparted, and released to go forth and do what God has called you to do. That you now understand you had to go through that. And you're able to go through it. Because God has given you his Holy Spirit without limit. According to John chapter 3. So when he gets over into John chapter 4. You understand why Jesus must need it to go through. So that he too, just like we can, give someone the word of God. And encourage him. And let him know. The Lord lives, the Lord saves, the Lord sets free, and the Lord makes whole. Amen. It is well next week, 5 o'clock, Sands. Amen. I love you all. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I thank you for journeying with me. I'm going to bed because when I say I have been up all night, I literally have been up since 9 o'clock yesterday morning. Amen. So glory to God. Sister Tuesday going to try to go to sleep. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. I will see you next week. God bless you.